agriculture development in Ghana is constrained by several factors and characterized in two components. Limited availability of inputs to promote aquaculture development and not enough support for farmers through funding and training. My name is Enyona and this is The Ghanaian Farmer. This week, we'll put the spotlight on catfish fingerling culturing and we'll be speaking with Isaac Selly. He's a member of the Akosombo Zone Fish Farmers Association and he has been doing this for the past nine years. Of course, the most amazing part is he happens to be a student, so he's studying in the tertiary institution whilst also doing this business. We are going for a quick breather. When we come back, we'll engage Isaac in a detailed conversation. Stay tuned. <laughs> Thanks for staying. In case you just tune in, we are talking or we are discussing the production of catfish fingerling before you move to the next stage. And my guest is Isaac Sully. Isaac Sully, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Anyona. Now, when we say catfish fingerling, what exactly are we talking about? Um, when we say, let's say, first, let's say fingerling. Okay. Uh, when it's a fingerling in mm -hmm. aquaculture. Mm. It is just the nomenclature of how the, how uh, the fish is tamed uh, based on the development uh, processes. So when we say a finger lens, it's derived from the word finger. Okay. So maybe the size of your finger, that is a finger lens. So a fish of that size is a finger lens. Okay. Uh, normally, uh, it is between um, 10 to 15 centimeters. Okay. Yeah. That way you can call it a finger lens. Okay. So, yeah. So a catfish finger lens is a, a fish, a, a catfish fish mm. out of a size of uh, 10 to 15 centimeters long. Mm. Yeah. How do you come by the finger lens? Do you get it from the parent in the water lake or you produce it artificially? We produce it artificially, but first you, have, you need to get a broodstock, the parents. Okay. So the parents, you will get it from uh, the fisheries commission. Mm. Uh, they are the... Uh, people that sell the boot stock, mm -hmm. the, even tilapia or catfish, they have to sell you the boot stock, mm -hmm. which is the uh, Clarence Garipinos. Okay. Yeah, that is what we do in Ghana. Okay. So you have to get the boot stock from there, then you can do your spawning, then you get your fingerlings. Okay. Yeah. So, how much is the the spawning sold or the, the, the thing you the mentioned? Stock. The boot stock. How much yeah. is it sold for? Uh, currently, it's about 50 cities per kilogram. 50 cities per kilo. Yes. So how many do you buy? Uh, you buy as much as you depend can. Depending on the size of your farm. You are not depending on the size of your farm per se, but maybe depending on what you want to produce, your okay. target production. Right. Yeah, that is what you buy on. Okay. So when you buy that, what do you do next? Yeah, when you buy that, you when you bring the uh, brood stock, uh, we assume that uh, it is a mature brood stock, but you have to keep it at least a three days period before you can use it. So we have the artificial hormone. So when you bring the brood stock, the females, you inject them with the artificial uh, hormone, which is a uh, five mil to uh, a kilogram a weight fish. So you, then you leave it for about eight hours, then you strip it, then you take the meal, the, uh, the meal you got it, you take the meal out, sprinkle it on it, and then you lay it in your hatchery. For maybe 24 hours, you are done, it's ready. How long do you hatch them for? 24 hours. 24 hours. Yeah, then okay. they are hatched. Yeah. Okay, so after the hatchery, what next? Yeah, after the hatchery, there your work begins. Okay. Uh, the hard work begins. Uh, the siphoning, then you have to wait for a three days period for them to absorb the, the yolk sac before you start feeding them. Yeah, so basically after the hatchery, it is how you manage them now. Okay, yeah. how many days does it take for me to see the small fingerling? A small finger length. Yes. Uh, Before the eggs or whatever it is that you have kept for 24 hours or how many days you yeah. mentioned, how long is it before I see yeah, something least, like... By three days now you should be seeing a fry, something like a tap pool. Okay. Yeah, you can see it clearly. By like, three days? Yeah, by three days you, okay. you should see it clear, right. like a tap pool. Okay. Yeah. How many pieces of those can you keep in one tank? Yeah, the, those ones you can pick, you can keep as... 
maybe a twenty thousand in a in a square meter. Mm. Yeah, at that stage. Okay. Yeah. And do you feed them yeah, during you, this you, hatching you, stage? Uh, after the hatchery. Okay. Uh, three so, three days after mm -hmm, the hatchery, mm -hmm. you start feeding them. What do you feed them? You we feed them with uh, people use the atemia. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a high protein feed. Mm. Yeah. You basically use the atemia. Are there any mortalities during this process? Yes, please. There are. How does it yeah. come about? Um, you know, the catfish are very fragile okay. at their initial stages. Right. And then uh, contamination and then keeping them right, keeping their um, uh, their system clean. Mm. Yeah. If you don't keep the system clean, mm -hmm. you, you are likely to have mortality, huge mortalities. Okay. Yeah. All right. When you buy from the fishery commission, yeah. How many do you get from one of the boots? Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, one female, mm -hmm. a one female fish can give you between 40,000 to 100,000 eggs. 40,000? Yeah. To 100,000 from just one, one female? fish. It will, yeah, one female fish. Okay. But uh, as to where, whether they will hatch, mm -hmm. they will all hatch, mm -hmm. is the question. Is that likelihood not all of them will hatch? Yeah, and what it's, it's a 50 50 uh, uh, possibility. Yeah, what happens? Yeah, there's sometimes uh, mm -hmm. maybe the meal you are using, mm -hmm. the meals are not very good. Okay, yeah, and then also maybe uh, the system you are running, the water quality, mm -hmm. uh, you didn't change the water on time, the oxygen depreciates, mm -hmm. and then uh, ammonia, mm -hmm. ammonia build up in the system, it mm -hmm. will kill them. Okay, yeah, what, what sort of water is best? Mm -hmm. If, like you are doing, like yeah. you produce the fingerling and people, outgoers come and buy, yeah. what kind of water is good for it? Is a it fresh. tap water or the one from a water leak? <laughs> That's a big question. Currently, we mm -hmm. are having issues with the water leak, to be frank. Okay. Yeah, uh, with the high rate of contamination and all that. Okay. So, when you are using the water leak, you need to uh, filter, do a lot of work on it before you can use it. A lot of work like like work. filtration okay trying to do some uh, filtration mm. systems mm. before using it especially introducing it uh, to hatch your eggs mm. or uh, for your fries mm -hmm. yeah you need to do a lot of work on it okay yeah before you can use it right so we were speaking on the feeding before we, we went back how many times do you feed them at that stage yeah. uh, literature says three times but i feed as much as uh, maybe eight times in a day because uh, the reason why I do that is that um, the catfish, mm -hmm. they are very carnivorous. They feed on each other. Okay. So uh, I assume that if you feed them, that when you are full, you don't have to chase someone. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I feed them maybe uh, every hour, mm. hour on the hour, mm. till the day is over. What kind of climatic condition is suitable? Yeah. A temperature around 30 degrees is very okay for them. Okay. Yeah. All right. So how long do you keep them for at your uh, pond or inside your pond before you begin to sell? Um, I'll say a period of roughly about a two months. Two okay, months. That's, that's eight about weeks? eight weeks. Okay. Yeah. Because they move from the hatchery. In mm -hmm. the hatchery, after mm -hmm. they hatch, mm -hmm. I keep them there for... 15 days okay then i move them into the earthen pond for another 15 days that's 30 days mm -hmm. then i bring them into the tarpaulin tanks outside why do you go through that stages yeah you see this these things they vary from farm to farm mm -hmm. you will go to another farm maybe the person hatches and then pour them directly into the pond okay yeah but you have to study your farm and know the uh, the lineup what mm -hmm. works for you mm -hmm. uh -huh. so you don't go by copying and say this person is doing it like this, I must also do it like that. No. I see. Yeah, it varies from farm to farm. Okay, so we'll be showing viewers the earthen pond you yeah, have, yeah. and then the tapoli pond, yeah. and then where you do the, the hatchery, hatchery. Yeah. itself. Yeah. Okay, so when you're about to sell, how do you sell? Do you count it? One, two, three, four, five. I imagine counting this. Yeah. <laughs> this I... tiny fish. <laughs> do you count or you just put it on a scale and then you're able to tell this kilo is going for this amount? Yeah, unfortunately. Um, the tilapia, mm -hmm. we, we do average weight and then based on that, maybe we just fetch and then give. But the catfish is not like that. We count one, one, one. You count it? Every sing, single one, one, one. So one is how much? One, uh, depending on the stage, but I sell between 60 to 1 CD 20 pesos. 60 to uh, 60 1 60 pesos to 1 CD 20 pesos. Okay. Yeah, depending on the size of the fish. Okay. Yeah. All right. So how much did you invest? when you were starting this business? It's starting this, uh, the catfish hatchery 
I actually invested about 30,000 Ghana cities. What and what went into the 30,000? Uh, getting the place, uh -huh. uh, the land, uh, electricity, uh -huh. and then putting up some structures. Right. Yeah. First, I always started with one trapoli and then uh, two of my hatchery okay. uh, tanks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now, how is the marketing bit? Because this program is not just to educate people, but we also want to let them know the marketing demands or availability. How is the marketing bit like? How do you go about the marketing? <laughs> marketing. Uh, I would say that marketing, uh, marketing catfish, uh, there's, there's already market. Okay. Right now, I can't meet my demand. Really? Yeah, I'm unable to meet my demand. Who and who do you sell to? Uh, the people along there. Uh, yeah, the Akosombo stretch, and then uh, people from outside, like what I've sent to uh, Bibiani, Takwa, and all that. But I looked like the quantity you placed the, the, the determines whether I will attend uh, to you quickly or not. Hey, so you give priorities? Or oh, not really priorities, hey. but maybe like I have an MOU with uh, one lady, okay. so I have to supply her first Hello. before. Uh, any other VIP person. customer. Oh no, he, he, <laughs> that one is actually... No, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> I, I, I'm happy yeah. when I meet business people who say this is how yeah. the marketing is going. Yeah. It encourages others to also venture into yeah. that space. It means that we need more yeah, yeah, yeah. farmers in this space. Yeah. Okay, now demand is even higher yeah. than supply. supply yeah. Just like you're, you're yeah. saying. Yeah. In a month or in weeks, I don't know how your sales is like. Whether it's sale, it's monthly sales or weekly, but are you able to give me an estimate on average of sales you make? Yeah, averagely. In a uh, in a month, mm -hmm. uh, if all things be equal, you don't have much mortalities. Mm -hmm. You can do fifteen to twenty thousand. Fifteen to twenty thousand. Yeah. In a month. Yeah. Okay. If I want to go into catfish production, do I need some special training? Uh, yeah, you need a special training. Okay. Yeah, because uh, the catfish, mm -hmm. uh, it's very dicey. Mm. Uh, you can't do it. The hatching you can hatch. Okay. Even in your kitchen at your backyard, mm -hmm. you can hatch. Mm -hmm. But keeping them, mm -hmm. uh, managing them, mm -hmm. uh, it's it's a whole lot. Now let's talk about the management bits. Yeah. How do I manage the catfish? Yeah. If I want to be an outgrower and I buy from you, yeah. How do I manage it oh, yeah, to ensure from... less mortality? From that point, mm -hmm. I think your work is limited. Okay. Yeah, your management uh, uh, practices or what you put in is less. Okay, so an outgrower has less work to do compared to, to the hatchery. Okay, so yeah. as a hat someone who is into the hatchery, how is your maintenance work like? In case somebody also wants to go into the hatchery and not the outgoing, what are your maintenance culture? Yeah, the maintenance. Uh, the first one is the biosecurity. It's very important in the hatchery. Okay. And then... Uh, How do you mean biosecurity? Break it down. Your practices that can bring a uh, disease mm -hmm. into your uh, hatchery. Mm -hmm. uh, you try to uh, limit them, just like what we have here, the food bath. Yeah, so when you are coming, I'll let my viewers see. When when you are coming from the house to yeah, the farm, farm yeah. you need to do food uh, bath. bath. Yeah, there's a food bath. And the water contains what? Uh, it's a chlorine mixed with uh, parazole. Okay. Yeah. I have to always step in that yeah, before I walk in into the farm. Yeah. Any detergent. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Be okay. Aside that, what other practice do yeah. I need to adhere to keep up consistently? Yeah. Uh, your water quality. Okay. Yeah, because uh, they are aqua, mm. like like water mm. organisms. Mm -hmm. So their environment matters to mm. them very much. Mm. So uh, you keep your uh, water quality at the optimum level. Okay. Yeah, and then you always siphon the the dead. If you see every mortality, you pick it out. Mm. Uh, the fish, the excess feeds, mm -hmm. the one they haven't eaten, you try to siphon them out. Okay. Yeah, quickly. Okay. Yeah, else it will contaminate the... The rest. Uh, yeah, the okay. water and then... Ah. Uh, in, by morning... There will be have, trouble. Yeah. yeah have you ever experienced that before? Oh, yeah, very much. How many, How often when very, you start ve Very often. Okay. Very Even at this level? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, you, you can't... Sometimes everything is clear. Everything mm. is clean. Yet... Mm. Uh, they you have challenges. Yeah, they just decide to die. And okay. That, that is it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you said they decided to die. Yeah, yeah they decided okay. to die. Okay. Now, how that is one thing. Mm -hmm. That is why um, uh, uh, the catfish hatchery is just like it's almost like a, a plus one minus one mm. kind of business. Yeah. So if uh, you are not strong, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you can't move forward. Mm. Yeah. Mm. 
it's almost like a plus one money. There but you do it today. Many. Yeah, you do it today, you are there. Okay. Tomorrow, no. This problem. Yeah. So okay. you have to start. I realized that when we came into the farm, yeah. you started you opened the pipe. Um, is there a pipe or it is the water lake you're pumping inside? It's the water lake. Why are you doing that? Because there's already water in the tank. Yeah, uh, it, it, uh, I gave it a, a, a gauge. There's a certain level. There, there's a certain level that it has to take, especially for the fishes there. Because based on the quantity inside, mm -hmm. we give it that, that level mm. uh -huh, that the water should be there. Mm. Uh -huh, so the water is not there as uh, I came in, so I have to bring it up. Okay. Now, you did say that starting off, you buy uh, the boot stock. Brood. Brood stock yeah, the from parents. the parent from uh, Fishery Commission. Yeah, the fishery. Now, after, I mean, going forward, can I do my own yes, you, extraction? You can, yeah, yeah, you can do your own. Is it allowed? Yeah, it's, it's, it's allowed because even sometimes you go to them and they are not having the brood stock. Okay. Yeah, so uh, it is best if uh, you can also. I mean, normally what I do is that. Um, when I uh, I produce or the people that buy for me, mm. yeah, when they, uh, they they are about harvesting, mm -hmm. I move to their farm and then pick the very big ones out and then keep them as blue stock. It I is see. yeah genetically. Uh, I assume that as they they grow faster, mm -hmm. their uh, their offsprings mm -hmm. will also grow faster. Faster. Yeah. Okay. So um, at this level, are you able to produce or do this business the whole year? Yeah. What are, what are some of the basic challenges that you would call on the fishery commission to address in this sector, in the fishery sector or fish farming sector? Fish farming. Yes. One is the, uh, the high feed cost. Okay. And then right. the, the, the second will be the uh, educating the, uh, the farmers mm. yeah, on like places to get their uh, seeds okay. from. Yeah. Okay. Because it's very important. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, gone by was an insightful conversation with Isaac Selly and he is uh, the owner or the founder of Cellulom what again? Farms and Consult. Farms and Consult on social media. In case I skip any question make sure to catch up with him for him to help you. Still on the subject of catfish fingerling production in Ghana. Somewhere last year 2021 the Fishery Commission distributed over 35,000 fingerling to farmers to promote uh, the production of fish uh, in Ghana. So fish consumption in our meal in Ghana is almost close to 60 to 80 percent and so we try to find out from one person or a client who is into trading of catfish to find out from him what he considers when he's buying catfish from uh, any of the farms and how the business has been like for him ever since he started this business. We are into catfish house grower. So what we do is basically we are sourced to get to buy the fingerlings. But then before we buy fingerlings, there are a few things that we consider. If I'm checking the environment, so I can use Sally Farm as an example. Um, if you visit Sally Farm, you could see the environment and also the best practice in which he put into it. Now coming back to I mean the kind of catfish fingerlings he produces. I mean it's the African type, I mean the African catfish, which is well accepted by all. And is the um, the Clarias breed that is what he do, and that is what I mean the outgrowers or the market people for which we sell to. That is the preferred type for them. So why not? We always rush over there. And also, there's one thing that we look at. What we look at for records, you know, there are a few things in terms of catfish. The cannibalism level is high, so there are best processes that some of the farmers do and others do not do. What it means is definitely even if we are being given birth to as twins. There are times that one will grow bigger, other will grow, you know, understand that, uh -huh. So the same with, even though they hatch them the same day, the same time, some will be bigger than others. And because their cannibalism level is very high, so they tend to bully. They feed on each other and it makes them grow exactly. So, example like Sally Farm, if you get there, he do what we call grading. So he grade them into various sizes. So if you buy from such farmer, if you take it to your place, the level of cannibalism will be minimal. But in the case where you visit a farm where they mix it all up, you have more of the shooters or the bullies to kind of feed on the weaker ones or the smaller ones. So at the end of it, you end up, you could buy like 5,000 pieces fingerlings. You may end up having like 1,005 or 2,000. Sometimes just like 1,000 pieces. But with such farm, you could, even if you lose some, just some handful, less than 3% or 4%. So these are one of the two things we consider 
before buying finger lips. So the market trend currently, you know, um, the Ghanaian market, um, it's mainly our delicacy is catfish. We are now getting to understand the uh, uh, tilapia. We are now getting to understand the catfish. So then now we have two various type of markets that we sell now. We have the those that do the grill. Normally we call it point and kill, and we have the smoking size. And one thing too is um, the catfish also has a very good um, export potential. For which um, other European countries, we have people who comes to buy from us. Some will like you to smoke it for them. They buy the smoke one. Others will buy it live. They will process it to smoke it for the local market, like the I mean um, the Adabaka markets. Some supply to offices and those. So it depends on who is coming to buy. So you also get to know how you are growing your fish too. Because the cut fee, I mean, the, those who buy for the point and kill, normally don't buy less than one kilo per fish. So they buy like 1.5, 1 kilo, 1.2 kilos and above. But then those buying for the smoking size, buy from 400 grams to like 800 grams. That is okay for them because it has less fat. And also whenever you are smoking, it gets to dry very well. Yes, so that's about the market. Thank you so much for joining us. This program is brought to you by Lizzie and Leaf Tomato Mix. If you want to buy any of this in bulk, the numbers are displayed on the screen. You can call them and they'll deliver to your doorstep. Get interactive, share your views, your questions with us on our social media platform, The Ghanaian Farmer, on YouTube, LinkedIn, and Instagram. It is Ghanaian Farmer. Make sure to subscribe and also press on the notification button so you get to see all the uploads we do this and every day on YouTube. My name is Enyonam, but when you see me, you can call me Ghana's Finest Farmer. I'll see you again next week. Thanks for watching.